Daytona Beach, Florida is four hours north of Miami, but it's a totally different animal. You come up here, it's a different pace, different kind of buyers, different kind of sellers. I'll ship a truckload of cars up here and lickety split. I'll come back with a whole truckload of different cars. I'm able to exchange cars that are older in my inventory for different cars. And it's a wonderful system. You got guys that come up here strictly to trade. They don't even want money. They want to bring a different car home. Hey, Troy, what's up, man? What do you say, Ted? So what you got on the little Jeep? I've been asking 14.5. What do you got for me? I got a 58 Edsel police car. Well, that's close. Let's look at that. Let's take a look at it. I think he wants my Edsel or my Chevelle. I'm not sure yet. I'd love to relieve Ted from some of his cash today. It's Edsel. really funny looking, isn't it? It has all new interior, all new engine. What engine is it? Original 312, all new. Runs good? Runs the best. The Edsel's a rare, non-desirable car. Unless you get a convertible, then you got something. I think in hard money, the Edsel's worth from five to seven grand. That's the end of it. Well, let's make a trade on something. What are we trading on today? My Aztec? No, I'm not into that. It's too new. The Grand Marquis, that's excellent. Cold air, beautiful interior, runs up and down the road, and I gotta come your way a little bit, I will. Ted, five grand. You're out of your mind. But I'd give you two grand. No. Uh, what else can we do? A van I drove up in, which is perfect. That goes on your lot. You'll turn it right around. Oh, it's early. Maybe we can kick up something before the show's over. Troy must have made a lot of money because he ain't budging. He's too tough. You're trying to steal my Edsel, Ted. There's no stealing from you, Troy. You know what you got? You're a smart guy. I have a 10 or 12 grand Edsel, so let's make a deal. You got a five or six grand Edsel. You don't have a 10 or 12 grand Edsel. <laughs> That's got too many doors. The cop you know? cars all have four doors. Yeah, but that ain't a cop car, so don't worry about now. it. It is now. It is now. You got an answer for everything. Yeah. Let's try and get something done. Well, how much do you want to give me in the minivan? So I'll give you 2500 bucks. I can't do that, Ted. We're I too far. I think you should. How could you say we're too far away? Because we are. That's a $4,500 minivan. That's what they sell for all day long. Take five grand and we'll get it done. You're crazy. You're just crazy. You know, you really are nuts. I'm worried about you. I'm worried about you, Ted. He wanted my car for free because his car's only worth five to seven grand. Then he hit me at that kind of money plus my car. Right now, it's not making sense. Probably ain't gonna be able to work a deal on that, so we'll see where it goes. Maybe we'll work out something later today or something. So I'm walking back here at the car show in Daytona, and I saw a Black Beauty, the Green Hornet car. Blew me away. This is uh, my beauty. The Black Beauty. This is a 1966 Imperial Crown. Dean Jeffries built two cars. This that you see in front of you is the second of the two cars. Both were used on the show, except this one only appeared that we know for sure in uh, a two-part episode where they had a good Green Hornet followed by a bad Green Hornet. Does it start? Yep, starts, runs, everything's functional. Would you consider selling this car? Not at this point. Uh, I'm kind of saving it for my daughter for her inheritance. I mean, like a hundred grand type of a number? Well, I think I'd have to pass on that. It's kind of hard to say what the real value of the car would be. Having based it upon the sale of the number one car, which is the sister car to this one, that car is not quite as accurate as this one is. That sold for 192000 and I would have to say that it would be in excess of that for this. I offered him $100,000. I figured he'd sell the car. And he politely told me, no. It's tough to buy a car when people are in love with it. Take 110,000, call it a day. Nah, it's really the love of the car, the love of the series, and... I can understand that, and I appreciate you showing me the car. I'm over in the spots in the car corral with a check if you want to sell it. <laughs> Will do. Let's roll, Cato. There you go. Thanks again, man. I got my eye on a 944 Porsche a guy's got. It's not exactly a Highline Porsche, but it's better than a soccer mom van. If I could trade on my van, I'm gonna be so happy. I love the van, it runs great, but it's not what I sell. Ted came by and he saw my 944. I think he likes it. My dad happened to blow up his van on Wednesday, so maybe we can make a deal with a van that he's got there, but uh, the money's gotta be right. We'll see, we'll see what he can come up with. So this is the car, Frank? Well, I picked up this beautiful 944 from one of my customers. It's just a beautiful car. It's been sitting in a warehouse for a couple of years. We got a nice uh, 1986 uh, Porsche 944 here. It's not one of the more desirable Porsches that they make, but it is a beautiful car. It's a one owner car and uh, the interior is immaculate and it runs great, cold AC. It's a really nice car. And if, and if we make this deal, he's gonna get himself a, a heck of a car. And so you mentioned that your dad had blown up his van. He did, he blew, he blew up his van on Wednesday. I have and, the solution. Uh, I drove up here in a minivan. Come here, show it to you. All right. It's an amazingly good van. The air is ice cold, the radio works, goes down the road 100%. All right, it's great. So you can speed with it, that's great. But we're gonna be trading in a 944 for a minivan. 944 is maybe the worst Porsche they ever made. And it's an 87, the 89s are good. And you know that. You're right. You're and right. I know I'm gonna have to come your way a little bit. Now, 
You want 6,900 for that. And I would like to get 4,500 for mine, which makes like 2,500. I'd have to give you? Come on, I can't drive. Uh, my wife will kill me if I show up at home with this thing. This now, if I show up home with this and some cash, then she's gonna be okay with well, it. Well, 2,500 bucks. Yeah, it's gonna, have to, it's gonna take a little bit more than that, Tim. I think Frank has the car underpriced. I think it'll do 8,500 anywhere. And I think I'm really comfortable at four or less. Anything over four, I'm out. I understand that the Porsche is not a 911. I get it. But the thing is beautiful. The interior is beautiful. And I'm gonna go home with a a minivan. I gotta wrap my mind around that. So, you know, it's gonna be a little bit easier if I can wrap it in $100 bills. Listen, Frankie, I'll go 3,500. Killing me, man, come on, it's enough. Give me four grand and we'll call it even. Wow. Come on, you know it's worth it. About four grand and dinner Sunday night. Done deal. Done. Thank That's you. gonna be the fun of it. You got scongeal? Yeah, I'm scongeal. I got calamar, I got uh, calzones, I uh, got marigotti, I got all that stuff. Uh, I'm in. You know, the dinner wasn't a big deal. I was probably gonna invite him over for dinner anyway. Either way, it's a win-win situation. I'm happy. Dad's getting a new van. My wife's gonna stack $100 bills. We're all good. You know, I had to go to the four grand to get Frank to say yes, and I'm happy. I wanted the van to be gone, and I wanted the Porsche to come home with me. Oh, you're back today. Hey, guy. Have you done any trading? I see the, it's, the Edsel's gone. Yep, I got the 63 Impala. That's more me. It could be you. What about this the just, wagon here? This I just got also. 65 Chevelle wagon. Four speed or three speed? Four. Four speed. I just bought a station wagon here, a real slick 65 Chevelle. Maybe I'll trade that one. The Edsel that I was looking at is gone, but he got a real slick blue 63 Impala. That's a lot better and a lot more valuable. I'd like to see what he wants to do, and we'll make a trade if we can. I'm not sure what he wants yet. He's got a little four-speed wagon here with air. How about the best thing I'd be interested in? What are we going to do on the wagon? I know you're into the Impala. But I also like this. I just got it. But I think, in all honesty, I think they're probably worth about the same thing. Maybe you ought to give me a little money this time because I'm sort of kind of going backwards. I just got it. Ted, I have new bumpers, and you need bumpers, and you're going to have to pay me a little bit. I think the Chevelle and his Impala are worth pretty darn close to exactly the same. The Impala might be worth a tad more, but I just got that uh, four-speed Chevelle, so we'll see. Let's get deal done. Come on. Swap me even. 1500 in a wagon, and we're done. It's not fair. Ted. Go my hand. 1200 let's get it done. That's made in the middle. It is. Done deal. Done deal. Thank you. I good appreciate it. you drive that car yet? Sounds good. Is it all right? Yeah. Finally, after two days, I made a deal with Troy. Now, this is a four-day event. I intend on trading until the very last minute. And on the last day, people get real serious. They start realizing that their stuff is only worth what it's worth, not what they're asking. And I'm about to meet Butch Patrick, Eddie Munster, and I have a Munster mobile. So I am psyched. Really, really psyched. I want to look at that. That's well, spectacular. Everybody has a coffin car, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> my first car was a 69 Mach 1. Had a lot of muscle cars through my years, and now I'm the proud owner of these uh, tribute cars of the Munster Coach and Dragula. I got my own coffin car, as you can see. The, these are Dragula? This is a tribute car. It's surprisingly how many there are floating around, but the ones that are actually Barris official emblemed, there's only a couple. And then over here, I have the tribute coach, and these were built by a gentleman named Rucker Posey in uh, Richmond, Virginia, that I uh, worked with for the last five years, and he retired last year, so I wound up buying them. Street legal, registered. I, I love these cars. I have one. I have the, a Gary Powers car. Well, you know, the Munsters, it was cool because it was the first hot rods on television, inspired a whole generation, the George Barris, built the originals. I got this last February, and I went on the road, and this year what we're gonna do is a Route 66 tour to celebrate 50 years of the Munsters. What he's got here today, these Munster Mobile, the Dragula, it's just so nice, everything is perfect. And this guy knows how to do this, it's what he does. Your car's, oh my God, it's gorgeous. It was really nice reminiscing and talking with Butch Patrick, Eddie Munster, it was great. What a nice man, I had a blast. Some people make it fun, he's one of them. I am so lucky to have been on a show that not only endures as a TV show, but also has hot rods involved. So I have this really neat Americana foothold. And it's your passion. It's not work. And as people say, do you ever get tired of doing it? And I said, if I got tired of doing it, I wouldn't be here. I yeah. enjoy it. Yeah, man. I'm going to come and, down and, and visit you. you. I would love that. We'll I'll give we'll you my compare car. cars. Yeah, there's no comparison. Your cars, oh my God, it's gorgeous. I love Daytona, you never know who you're gonna meet, and I ran into the Graham brothers. We both like the same kind of cars, 
both the same business, and they're very sharp. When I ran into them, they were looking at a Corvair, which I never thought they would look at. That Corvair had an LS3 motor in it, which is crazy, but the car wasn't finished either. The interior wasn't together. That's not a car for us. We're walking along, and we bump into a blue GS Stage 1 convertible. Too good to be true. Four-speed, air-conditioned, great colors, great options. Is it a real car? No, it's supposed to be a Stage 1. If it's a Stage 1, it's an 80 grand car. Can you run the VIN and find out? The VIN number tells you it's a GS, but it doesn't tell you if it's a Stage 1. Now, the thing is, there is only 81 Stage 1 four-speed convertibles built. So if it is the real deal, it's an extremely rare car. I got a feeling that this guy is smart enough to know that his car is a clone. That's why the price is the way it is. That's what I say, but Brian's shooting for that home run again. But the thing is, but he's you got know, nothing even to lose. Even if it's not one, it's still worth that kind exactly. of money. Exactly, he's got nothing, nothing to lose. Right, right. that's what he says, right. but it's, and it's a waste of our time then. Or from 32 grand and buy yeah. the car. That's the number, isn't it? Yeah. If it's a stage one, they hit a home run. We all wanted the car. Ted was gracious enough to, to let me have it. We ended up striking a deal and bought it. You know, if this car turns out to be a real stage one convertible four speed, if it turns out to be legit, it's a $150,000 car uh, all day long. If it doesn't, well, we'll put it up at 49.9 and still make a good buck. The end of the show, I still have the Aztec. I'm on a mission. My buddy Dan has a 98 GT Mustang convertible. They're easy to sell. I want to bring something different home. I'll swap them if he's willing. Danny boy. Ted, this is you? It's ugly, How you man? been, my man? I ain't I'm seen good, you in a long time. I've known Ted for 30 years. Ted's always looking to trade, but now maybe he's a little more desperate because this is an ugly duckling. He's asking 55 and I'm 45, but I mean, you know, those are trading prices and negotiating prices. I'm down to like my last couple of cars and this is really ugly and I don't want to bring it home. All I've got really left in the this price range. To trade. To trade, okay? Plus a little boot because there's no way. What you got without got the a, preamble? I've got a nice, nice 98 Mustang, GT convertible, cold air, it's red. New rubber. 4.6? Yeah, 4.6. Runs great. I, you can drive it home. With you and I, it don't take more than five minutes to do a deal, yeah, so let's finish this. Yeah, and the numbers on the window we mean nothing with you and me. Here's the deal. All right, let's just cut to the chase. The way this deal is going to work is if we throw keys and just do an even trade. That's fair. I don't know who's winning, but it's a different car to bring home. I'll swap titles with you. Even trade, done. Uh, I can't That's do as that. much as I'll do. Oh, man. No, no seriously. Get a pass. Let's just shake hands and be done with it. I've done too many deals for you to beat this up. Is the air cold in it? Air is ice cold and it drives good. I've driven it home a few times. You got the title? <laughs> you know better than that. Okay, you drive it to the spot. You drive it to my spot and I'll do business, but I'm not letting my friend sit. Yes, sir. Thank Done you, deal. brother. I love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I, I knew I was going to wind up throwing keys. You know, getting money out of him is like pulling teeth, okay? I'm not fond of 98 Mustangs. They're a dime a dozen but I really hate the Aztec. The Daytona was great as usual. I brought 12 cars here. I'm coming home with 20 new ones. I got four cars for my 61 Jeep, which I think was insane. I traded a soccer mom van for a Porsche. It doesn't get better than that. And the highlight was the last deal and the end of the day, getting rid of my ugly duckling. My Aztec is gone, thank God. Bunches and bunches of new stuff and got rid of a lot of old stuff. Daytona was great and I will surely be back every time.